by looking at this table. Yeah, Mg, right? MgCl2 has Mg, and if you look at it, what's the charge on Mg? Yeah, plus two. So let's just write down underneath MgCl2 that MgCl2 breaks down into Mg positive two, okay? So MgCl2, it breaks down into Mg positive two, and we get that from the solubility table. Um, what's the negative ion that comes out of MgCl2? Yeah, Cl, right? We basically just look for what's in the molecule on this chart. So Cl specifically minus. So we're going to write underneath MgCl2, Mg2 plus, and Cl minus. I know there's two of them, but we just need to care about which ion comes out. So that's what the first thing that pops out. Okay. Any question on how that breaks down? You guys chilling? Okay. Let's do the next one now, and then um, we'll finish the equation. So Na2CO3, we're going to take a look at the chart. Um, What's the positive ion that comes out of Na2CO3? Yeah, Na right here, sodium. Okay, so we're going to write Na plus underneath this compound. And I, again, I know there's two of them, but we're just going to write Na plus just because we just care about the ion. And then the negative one is obviously going to be CO3. And if you look at your chart, you'll notice that CO3 is negative two. Okay, and that's gonna be right here. CO3, negative two. So Na plus and CO3, negative two. All right, so far so good, everybody? Okay. Okay, so we need to figure out the right side of the equation now. Now, if you guys remember, um, this type of equation is called precipitation, but also it's called double replacement because we just replace the ions two times. So we take the positive of one of them and we combine it with the negative of the other. So all we're going to do is just write the positive one next to the negative one. So MgCO3. And we just need to make sure that we have a balanced charge with the positive energy and the negative energy they balance each other out. So Mg is two plus, CO3 is two minus. Do they balance each other out? Yes, plus two, minus two. So this guy is happy just the way it is. All right. So we got one half of the uh, the react, the products. Now we just need to figure out the other chemical. So we get Na and we combine it with Cl. So let's write them next to each other, Na and Cl. Okay, now do these guys balance each other out? Does Na and Cl balance each other? Yes, positive one, negative one, so these guys balance. So there we go. So lucky for us, this was kind of an easy one where both of the molecules, the charge is balanced. Um, and so we can just write them like that. Okay, next thing we want to do is figure out if they dissolve in water or not. So let's start with MgCO3. In order to figure out if this guy dissolves in water, we just need to look at our table right here. So we're just going to line up Mg and CO3. So if they line up, it says insol. And if you guys remember, does this dissolve in water? No, insol does not dissolve in water. And so behind this compound right here, we're just going to write parentheses S. Okay. So just remember that if something is soluble, SOL, it dissolves in water. So we do the parentheses AQ, which is what you see here. And if something does not dissolve water, it says insol, and we do parentheses S. Okay. And I'll give you guys the last one. This one dissolves in water, so it's AQ. All right, so that's kind of what we've been doing up till this point. There is, I do want to go over the balancing a little bit quickly, but do you guys have any questions or so far? Good? Hopefully it's familiar. Okay. Okay, so... The instructions tell us to complete the equation, but now we need to balance it, okay? So I know it's been a long time since we did balancing and we briefly touched on it earlier, um, but I wanted to go over balancing the way that we learned it before because um, we're gonna be doing stoichiometry and it might be a little bit easier to do it uh, this the old way. So what we're gonna do is underneath our equation, we're just gonna make a table where we 
basically figure out what elements are inside of the equation, okay? So if we take a look, look at the, we'll just take a look at one side of the equation. What is one element that you see on in the equation? Yeah, mg. Okay, what's another one? Cl. Next one. This could need to go in order. MgCl, Na, yeah. And I'm sorry, guys, it's really early. Chemistry is really hard in the morning. And then we have CNO, but one easy thing about these ion uh, equations is that we can just put the polyatomic together. So we can write CO3. Okay, so this is the table that we're going to use. Um, and we're going to count up how many of each are on the left side and the right side and just make sure we have the same number on both sides. Do you guys remember this back from like, I think like October, November? We did this a long time ago. Nobody remembers. Yeah, we're balancing. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Had me scared for a second. I was worried. Sometimes there's times where I teach where I don't teach it, and I think I did, and everyone just looks at me really weird. Okay, so let's count up how many of each of these things are on the left side and then on the right side. Okay, so how many mg's do you see on the left side of the equation? One. Okay. How many CLs are on the left side? Two. Two. How many NAs? Two. Two. And then for CO3, I know there's a three behind it, but that's part of the polyatomic. So how many total CO3s do you see? Just one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give you guys maybe about 30 seconds. I want you guys to fill in the rest on for the right side. So how many MG, CL, NA, and CO3 are on the right side of the arrow? So take about a minute to do that. Um, double check with the person next to you, just make sure you're doing it right. And then we'll finish up the balancing and then we can finish the question. Okay. Okay. So how many MGs do you guys see on the right side of the arrow? How many MGs on the right side? One. How many CO3s? One. Good. How many NAs? One. And how many CLs? Good. All right. So we just want to make sure that both sides have the same amount for everything, right? So if we take a look at it, MG is good. CO3 is good. The problem is CL and NA, right? So which side needs more CL and NA, left side or right side? Right side. So we need to add the molecule on the right side. So even though we need CL, we can't just add it by itself, right? Because then we're changing the recipe. You want to keep it exactly the same. So we have to add the entire molecule. So we have to write NaCl. And lucky for us, now we have two NAs and we have two CLs, so the equation is balanced, okay? All right, last thing, we just need to put numbers in front of the molecules. Um, the only one that changed is this right here. How many times do we write NaCl on our paper? Two, so we just put a two right here, and that's it, that's how you balance the equation. I know it's magical, right? Yeah, so crazy. It's like magic, I'm making this up. Wow. Yeah. Teaching guys like elven magic or something. Did you um, like create chemistry? I did create chemistry. Yeah. I was there when chemistry was created. Do I look that old? You good? Yeah. Oh, for sure. You need paper towels over there. Okay, guys. So um, let's move on to the next part. I know we spent a lot of time on part A. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we were all good because this is probably the most important part before we do um, the stoichiometry, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do now is very quickly, we're going to draw a picture of the system. Um, this is what we did before. So um, if you guys didn't already, take a second to draw like two boxes next to each other, and we're going to be writing inside them as usual. Um, so just make sure you guys make it like maybe four or five lines so that we can write inside of it. Um, but don't take like half the page or anything like that. Um, just draw two boxes next to each other and then we're gonna do the picture and then we'll write the name and then we'll do the stoichiometry, which is a new part, okay? So take a second to draw those boxes and then we will um, go on to the, or we'll finish that up. Okay guys, uh, let's go to the picture of the system. So what we're gonna do is basically, you guys notice how the, the equation is split up left side and right side, right? Same thing for the picture. This left one is representing the left side. The right picture is representing the right side. So all we wanna do is we just wanna show 
uh, what's happening inside of our container. So if you guys take a look at MgCl2, it says AQ. So does this dissolve in water? Yes. So this chemical dissolves in water, which means it breaks down into Mg2 plus and Cl minus when it's inside of water. So all we're going to do is we're going to write in our picture in the boxes that this chemical right here, MgCl2, breaks down into Mg2 plus and Cl minus. No, she's not here. Yeah, if she shows up, I'll send her over. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, and then the other one, we did this earlier too. Um, We said that Na2CO3 breaks down into Na plus and CO3 two minus. So all we got to do is just show that it breaks down into Na plus and CO3 two minus. Okay, so when we figure, when you write down what the ions are, the picture gets really easy. We just need to transcribe it. So if you see AQ, you just need to write that it breaks down into those ions. Okay. All right, for the right side of the arrow, um, we take a look at this chemical. Now, does MgCO3 break down in water? No, it says S, right? S means insoluble, so it does not break into water. So we're going to write the molecule together, so MgC3, MgCO3, and then we're going to draw like a little mound on the bottom just to show that it's kind of like a solid. This is what we did in the lab. You notice that when you mix two chemicals together, sometimes you make a solid kind of randomly. And then lastly, this one right here is aqueous, so it dissolves in water. So Na plus and Cl minus just kind of float around. Okay. Okie doke. So that's going to be the picture. Any questions on the picture? Because we're going to keep doing this. We're basically doing the same thing that we've been doing. We're just kind of adding one more thing on top of it, one more thing on top of it, so on and so forth. All right, let's go to part C. Um, this is naming the precipitate. We've been doing this again as well. So the precipitate is whatever chemical does not dissolve in water. So the chemical here that does not dissolve in water is MgCO3. Okay. So what we're gonna do now, we're just we're just gonna figure out what the name of MgCO3 is. Now, in order to do that, you're gonna take a look at your periodic table and flip it over. And if you flip it over to the other side, um, you're gonna see this chart right here. And then underneath the chart is going to be the rules for naming, okay? So hope, I know it's been a while since we did the naming stuff, but uh, let's do this first, okay? So the rules for naming is you wanna start with the cation, so the positive charge, okay? So if you take a look at MgCO3, which one of these is the positive one? Mg. And if you look at the periodic table, what's Mg's name? Yeah, magnesium, right? So we're just going to write that Mg is magnesium. So Mg is magnesium. Okay, and then next thing we're gonna do, if you guys take a look at the chart, it says that we write the anion or the negative one second. So the negative one's obviously CO3. And if you take a look at the chart above it, you'll see that CO3 is a polyatomic and its name is carbonate. So this chemical's name is going to be magnesium carbonate. And we just get it from the formula. All right, so that's the review portion, all the stuff that we've learned so far. And now we're going to add stoichiometry on top of that. Okay. okay. Yes. I know, but you already know that. I don't like you guys very much. Uh, are we your favorite class? Uh, no. No, I'm just kidding. That's the one thing I'm politically correct on is I don't say what my favorite class is. Although I do have a favorite class. But I did? I said that? I think I said, oh, okay, whatever. All right, but any questions on A, B, and C? You guys all good? Okay, let's go on to the stoichiometry. Um, and I know it's been a really long time since we did it, so I'm gonna take it really, really slow, okay? So let's move on to the stoichiometry. So I'll tell you guys what to copy down and what not to copy down, so don't start writing yet, okay? So 
don't copy this down. This is the same equation we had from part A. You guys can see that, right? Pretty familiar. All right. So for stoichiometry, um, there are a couple steps that you always want to take. Okay. So let's jot this down. So rules for stoichiometry. And I'm going to say stoic, and you could say stoic as well. It's just kind of an easier way instead of saying all those syllables. Okay. The first thing you want to do when you do stoichiometry is you want to balance your equation. Okay. It's the rules that we learned before. So write this down. Okay. You want to balance the equation, which we already did, right? When we were doing the uh, part A. Okay. So step one is always balance the equation, which we did. So good job, guys. Okay. Step two, what you want to do is you want to figure out your starting and your ending chemical. So what chemical do you start with? And then what chemical are you trying to find at the very end? Okay, that's what the second thing you want to figure out. And then the third step is you're going to do your math. And this is probably the longest part because there's a lot of different steps. Um, so we'll spend most of our time doing the math portion. Um, but that's kind of the through line you want to do. Balance, figure out your starting and ending. And then you want to do your math part, which can get pretty complicated. Okay, so we did our balancing already, so we're good to go. Let's go to the starting and ending. So I want you guys to take a look at this question. I want you guys to just read it, take a minute to read it. And I want you guys to just figure out, um, and you can work with the person next to you, what chemical do you think we are starting with in this problem? And what chemical are we supposed to find? So there are four chemicals. And I want you guys to just try to figure out what do you start with and which one do you think our final answer is going to be about. Okay, so take about a minute to do that. Um, if you want to jot it down on your paper, um, feel free to do that. Check with the person next to you, and then we'll see if we're all right. Okay, take a second to ding. Okay, so um, if you guys take a look at the question, um, it gives you a bunch of numbers, right? 100 milliliters, 0 0.5 molarity. Now, whenever you have numbers for something, that's usually a sign that's your starting chemical. So what chemical are these numbers about? It's MgCl2. So that means MgCl2 is going to be our starting chemical. This is the one that you want to start with. Okay, so if you guys guess that or figure that out, great job. Okay. So if we keep reading the question, so suppose that you react 100 mils of a 0.5 molarity Mg solution with excess Na2CO3. Now, if you ever see that word excess, it means whatever chemical is in excess, you have so much of it that you don't need to worry about it, okay? You're not going to run out of that chemical. Okay, so what that basically means is we can kind of ignore Na2CO3 for the rest of the problem. Once you finish the balancing, um, you don't really need to worry about this guy no more. Okay. All right. Lastly, the question is asking, what is the theoretical yield in grams of solid product? So the question is asking us grams of solid product. Now, um, if we take a look at the problem, we only have two other chemicals that we can work with. Um, which one is the solid product? Yeah, MgCO3. So what is the grams of MgCO3 is basically what it's asking. So this is going to be what we are looking for. So we can basically ignore Na2CO3 and NaCl going forward. All we really care about is MgCl2 and MgCO3. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And then now we get to do the fun part. We get to do the math. Yeah, so fun, right? Okay, so uh, let's do the math. Now, regular stoichiometry, we use this setup right here where we have all these fractions. Don't copy this down yet because I'll tell you guys when you guys need to copy it down. Um, basically, what this means is that you want to plug in grams into this line right here. But then if you take a look at the problem, do you have grams inside this problem anywhere? No, right? Instead, we have milliliters and we have molarity, right? Do you guys see that? Okay, so start copying this down because this is going to be the first step for your math. 
Now, hopefully you guys remember this. This was back in like December. Um, but molarity is equal to moles divided by liters. You guys remember this? It tells you how concentrated or how strong a, uh, what is it? A solution is. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to take these two starting numbers, we're going to plug it into this molarity equation, and that is going to allow us uh, to figure out our starting number, all right? Okay, so let's just plug it into the equation. Let's plug and chug, okay? So do you have molarity for MgCl2? Yeah. Yes. What's the number for molarity? 0.5. So for M, we're just going to write 0.5. Okay, and that is equal to, okay, do you have moles? No, we don't have moles. So that's what we're going to be looking for in step one. Okay, now we don't have liters technically, but we have milliliters, right? Now, if you ever want to turn milliliters into liters, if you want to jot this down, um, easy way to do it is you can divide uh, milliliters by 1,000. Another easy way I like to do it, and this is the way I do it, is all you do is you take the decimal and you just move it three times to the left. So 100 milliliters is equal to 0 0.1 liters. Okay, so whatever way works best for you, if you wanna plug it in your calculator just to be safe, do that. If you wanna just move the decimal because it's comfortable, you can do that as well. If you have another weird trick, you can use that as well, okay? Okay, so now we need to figure out moles. Now, if you guys notice, moles is on top of the fraction and 0.1 is on the bottom of the fraction, right? So the way that we can isolate moles is we can just multiply both sides by whatever's on the bottom of the fraction. So 0 0.1. So we can multiply 0 0.1 on both sides. That way we cancel out 0 0.1 on the right side. And then on the left side, all we're going to be doing is 0 0.1 times 0 0.5, and that's going to equal our moles. Okay. All right, and then the math should be pretty simple on that. I'll give you guys the answer. It's 0 0.05, and it's going to be moles of MgCl2, because that's, that's what the chemicals were, or the numbers were referring to. Okay, so that's the answer for step one. So far, so good. Hopefully, it's kind of familiar. I know we're spending a lot of time on this, but I want to go through it slowly just to make sure we're on the same page and you have some time to think about it. Okay. Okay, so we have our answer for step one. Now we're going to go to the math for step two. Now, before you guys copy this down, I want you guys to notice something before we start. If you take a look at the answer for step one, Okay, what's the unit of measurement? Is it grams, is it moles, and molarity? It's moles, right? Now, this is actually helpful for us because if you look at this setup, it tells you to start with grams, right? But we don't have grams, right? But if you look at the next fraction, what's on the top of the next fraction? It's moles. So we can actually jump into the problem right here. So we can skip this step and the bottom of this fraction and just automatically go to this top one right here. So we can just plug in 0 0.05 moles of MgCl2, okay? So I'll give you guys about a minute or so to copy down the rest of this setup, um, but we can basically skip this first section for stoichiometry. We just need to do this part right here, okay? So take about a minute to copy that down. Your starting number is 0 0.05 moles of MgCl2, okay? Wait, which? Alrighty, guys. So we have our starting number. It's 0 0.05. And if um, you're wondering where that came from, it's our answer to step uh, step one. Okay, it's this right here. So all we're doing is plugging it in right here. Okay, now when we do stoichiometry, what we want to do is we want to turn our starting chemical, we said this is the starting chemical, right? And we want to turn it into our ending chemical. Okay, what that means is at the very end, at the end of the last fraction, we want to figure out grams of MgCO3. So if you want to fill that in right now, you can. Um, so you start with MgCl2, and we want to turn it into 
MgCO3. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna help you guys out a little bit. It's a little trick that you guys can remember. This middle fraction right here is always going to be the same as your ending chemical right here. So it's going to be MgCO3. Okay. Just a little trick that you guys can use. I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but that's a trick that you can use just to make sure you're always getting the correct answer, okay? All righty, let's uh, start filling in some of the numbers. Now, if you guys remember, um, if I have something on the top of the fraction, right? I have MgCl2, but I don't want MgCl2. I want MgCl3. If I want to get rid of something on a fraction, uh, how can I get rid of it on the next fraction? Yeah, you put the same thing on the bottom. So we can put MgCl2 on the bottom. Because if you guys remember from algebra, if you have something on the top and bottom of a fraction, they can cancel each other out, right? And so that's why we put MgCl2 on the bottom. And then we want to turn it into MgCl3, which is why it goes on top right here. Okay. All right, so this first fraction right here, uh, we need, put, need to put in numbers now. Now, the numbers for the first fraction, if you guys want to jot it down, always comes from the balanced equation. Okay, so the numbers for the first fraction comes from the balanced equation. Basically, what numbers are in front of those chemicals in the equation? Okay, so let's start with MgCO3. What number is in front of MgCO3 right here? One, yeah, if there's no number, it's one. So we're going to put a one right there. And what number is in front of MgCl2? One. There's no number, so it's one. That's it. Super easy. All right. And then last fraction right here, we want to get rid of moles of MgCl3. So on the bottom, it's going to be moles of MgCl3. And this last fraction right here, if you ever see grams and moles on the same fraction, the numbers are going to come from the molar mass. Okay, and the molar mass is when you go to the periodic table and you add up the numbers on the bottom of the boxes. Okay, after we get that, I know it's been really long. I can see you guys getting tired already. You can multiply it all out and then we'll be all done. Okay. Okay, so let's find the molar mass of MgCO3, okay? Okay, so let's pull out our periodic tables and then we're gonna find the molar mass of MgCO3, okay? All right, so for Mg, okay, we take a look at the number on the bottom. What's the molar mass of Mg? Yeah, 24.3. So we're going to do 24.3. Okay, MgCO3 has one Mg. It has one carbon. And if we take a look at carbon, what's the molar mass of carbon? Yeah, 12.01. But I told you guys before, you can just drop the 0.1 and just do 12. Just to make it easier. So Mg, C, and then O3, which means that there are three oxygen, right? And oxygen is 16. So you can just add 16 three times. And that's going to be the molar mass of MgCO3, 84.3. Okay, so for those of you that kind of, I went a little too fast for, let me just uh, take a step-by-step. -step. Um, You look at the periodic table. If you take a look at MgCO3, Mg is 24.3. C on the periodic table is going to be 12. And then for oxygen, there are three oxygens. So you add 16, the number on the bottom, three times. And that's how you get your 84.3 number. Okay. Sorry if it's hard to see. I kind of put it on the bottom. Um, and then since it's molar mass, you put 84.3 on the top in one mole. Okay. Does that make sense, guys? I know it's been a really long time since we did molar mass or anything like that. Um, so if you have any questions, please let me know. All right. And then last, last step, we just need to plug into our calculator and then I will stop talking at you guys and you guys can uh, get started on your assignment, okay? So super simple. Um, the rules for multiplying out this fraction, if you guys forgot, is all the numbers on the top, you're going to multiply, and all the numbers on the bottom, you are going to divide, okay? And then the key is you can always ignore the ones, okay? 
So let's go to our starting number right here. Our starting number is 0 0.05. So we're going to plug in 0 0.05 in our calculator. Again, we're going to ignore the one. So ignore that, ignore that, ignore that. There's an 84.3 on the top. So what should we do? Multiply or divide? Yeah, we multiply. And that's all we got to do. 0 0.05 times 84.3. And then our final answer for all that work is 4.215 grams of MgCO3. And that's how you do stoichiometry for these reactions. Yeah. So I know that was a lot longer than I usually go. I just wanted to go slowly and there's a lot of information to cover. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a rest of class period to work on the assignment for um, this class. If you didn't finish the one from last time, you could finish that up as well. Um, if you have any questions or you want to check your answers, please let me know. And as usual, the recording of this lecture will be on Canvas if you ever need to go back and refer back to anything, okay?